Discord. All right, you guys. So happy, happy Friday. Got a lot of stuff on my mind. Um, it's been an incredible week, um, not only personally, but professionally. And so we'll get into everything in just a couple minutes. But since Melissa's talking, Melissa took action. Melissa, I don't know if you've done this before, but I want to have you lead the team out on the field. This is our battle cry. This is our opportunity to come out of the field, prep everybody for success for the day. So no pressure at all, Melissa, but I'm going to turn it back over to you and have you bring us all out on the field on this beautiful, beautiful Friday morning. So Melissa, hit us with it. Um, so good morning, everybody. Um, so we have a holiday weekend coming up. I know there's a few open houses going on that I saw. We are having a little party at the house, so I won't be there doing open houses, but um, I hope you guys kill it. And I think this is a good weekend to get out and talk to people. People are off four days this weekend or three days. So yeah, let's get out there and kill it this weekend. Have you, have you ever dropped off a hundred flyers before? No, but I started my farm. So I have a hundred people in my farm, houses in my farm, and I started it, but they were just mailers. So I introduced myself to my farm and then this is our, it's been two or three weeks since my first touch. So now I'm doing this for my second. I love it. So love it's going to be fun. It's going to be a nice little walk. That's right. But way to get out there early. <laughs> it's definitely going to be warm. So you guys, good stuff. You know what? I, I want to talk about a couple of things. I'm, I'm obviously going to call Mel today. She's here. I, I could not be more stoked and more excited about this conversation today because uh, this conversation is all about action. And, and before we get to the conversation, before we get takeaways from yesterday, um, I, I want to talk to you guys about where we are not living um, emotionally and mentally right now as a company and a team. Um, what I believe and what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing is I believe that we are a non-fear culture. What I mean by that is no matter what is happening around us, um, I feel that we're perfectly positioned for any type of change that is happening. And, and the reason why is because we are unmatched in this industry in the way that we communicate and collaborate. I don't know, and please help me understand if you know a team or know an organization that is doing what we do at such a high scale at this frequency, right? People come together, they have meetings, they have team meetings, they have you know group events, but I don't feel that there's anybody that matches us. And so when we think about what is happening in the industry, I think that we are unmatched because of our ability to grow together and our ability to continue to grow together. So I feel we're in a non-fear culture because also what we're doing is we're preparing. We're having the conversations. We're talking about dialogue. We're talking about mastery. We're talking about raising the intensity, raising our skill levels, doubling down, tripling down on our efforts and all these things that we're talking about. So what I, what I feel is that when you are learning these things, when you're hearing these things, when you're implementing these things, those are going to ultimately build what? Confidence. And when you're confident and you feel secure about this, no matter what has happened, it's like, hmm, bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. And I feel that's what's happening in this environment because I'm talking with you guys and coaching with you one-on-one. -on -one. And so I thought it was really, really powerful. A couple of things I want to share with you before we get into the conversation about taking action. Visibility. You guys are going to hear this word um, come up more and more. Two years ago, what was the word of the year? Anybody want to help me understand what that or any thoughts on what the word of the year was two, two years ago? And I try not to say it. Anybody? The pandemic. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Fucking pivot was the word. Pivot, pivot, pivot. I'm sick of that word. What you're going to hear more now, right now in this market, is visibility. You talk to any top producer, top coach, top influencer, top game changer. Right now, the conversation is going to be about visibility. And Melissa, I'm glad that you brought this conversation up about farming because I was watching a, um, a video and I forgot the name of it. And I'll remember it by the end of coaching, but um, it's a group on TikTok. I forgot the name. I'll get it for you guys. You may have seen the video, but it was a group of people that did a real estate project. And it was just for consumer behavior, consumer thoughts and patterns and did a really, really cool project. So I, so I thought I'd share this with you. So a group of people went and chose a community. The goal was we're gonna go in this community and we're gonna knock on every single door. We're gonna to talk to every single homeowner and we're going to talk to every single resident. We are not going to miss a door. We're gonna go out there as an army of people. 
what they did is when the homeowner or resident answered the door, they asked them a very simple question. Who is the number one realtor in this area? And while they got all kinds of different answers, there was no one person that was a dominant person in that area. Everyone gave different thoughts or different people. So what they did is they came back and they created a fake profile. They created a fake profile, a fake um, you know, contact information, took some, some pictures and did an eight by eight campaign. That was for eight weeks straight, they sent out a flyer with that person's information on it. Once that campaign was completed, what did that same group of people do? They went back to that same neighborhood and said, hi there, had that conversation. Who's the number one realtor? The majority of the people chose the fake person, which is absolutely crazy. It's not really that crazy. Why? It's because that person was simply visible. That person was somebody that, oh, there's Johnny. There's Johnny, there's Johnny, there's Johnny, there's Johnny. So I, I tell you guys that, that your visibility right now is so much more important. Your visibility in the way that you show up on social is way more important. Your consistent consumer behaviors that people are looking at, that's more important. You have to be sharing at the highest level. If you got to 20 deals last year by making 20 calls every single week, this year you might have to make 60 calls. It's really that simple. So you have to look at this business as we change and as we grow and as we develop new strategies, you have to look at yourself and say, how am I going to change? What's going to change in my approach? What's going to change in my dialogue? And, and that's why I thought yesterday was super powerful. So Mel, I, I'm really glad that you're here. This conversation is all going to be about taking massive action. Our efforts right now are going to dictate how we close out the summer and it's going to equate how we enter the winter time. Right, I, I know that all of our efforts today are gonna to pay off in August and September. And then all those efforts at the beginning of fall are gonna pay off in winter time. So I'm always future casting. When we talk about action, you guys, you first off have to make a decision. And I thought yesterday was super powerful because Melody's been telling me this for the last year. Melody's like, I wanna be on stage. I want the mic, give me the mic. I wanna do this. I wanna to go to, I wanna speak, right? And she has the energy, the tenacity and the enthusiasm to do that. And she's been manifesting this for months and months and months and months and um, made a decision to take massive action and then follow that up with taking action every single day on the way that she promoted the event, the way that she hyped the event and the way that she got people in that room. And what was the result? Well, the result was her taking or taking massive action. Excuse me. Her was result was her making a massive impact in our, in our community. She was able to contribute at a very high level. <clears throat> and she brought in the right people and the right talent. And so what I wanted to do today is I want to have Melody talk a little bit about her takeaways and what that, that, that event meant to her. But I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear from you what were some things that you learned. And right now, when you're thinking about the next couple months, what are you committed to taking action on? What are the things that you have thought about doing that you're finally saying, you know what, I am going to do it? What are you going to do? What action are you going to take? Are you going to wake up early and take your kids out walking before it hits 110 degrees and go drop off flags? Last year, Ivan Santa Cruz dropped off 2,500, 2,500 flags in Dublin and San Ramon. The dude is 24 years old and made $370,000 last year. You know how he did it? He door knocks like a champ. He is constantly, constantly, constantly working that neighborhood. I remember when the dude had some older car like I think it was just like an older you know high mileage Toyota now he's driving the car that he wants brand new Tesla he's doing the things that he wants he's creating the life that he wants and he did it by hitting the pavement so I'm gonna go over to you Melody while we're thinking about this you guys action and if you don't raise your hand then it's gonna show me that well maybe these people don't want to take action which I know that you guys are right action takers so first and foremost Melody I want to go over to you let's talk about what the event meant to you um how you're feeling today and what were some of your key takeaways so we'll start there and then we'll pass the mic to the team so uh melody i am beyond proud of you thank you elias for that beautiful introduction i hope everyone is doing well today first of all i just want to take a second and thank my volunteers that are on this call um cortez joe ellen jorge hector sheena um, you guys threw down yesterday, Daniela, Martinez, 
Um, I never would have been able to pull this off without the team. And I think that that's a testament to you guys and how powerful we are as a movement and as a group, because I'm nothing without my team. And I truly believe that at the bottom of my heart. Yesterday, I was driving home and I got tears in my eyes because I was so emotional and because I was just thinking about how much I love our culture and our group and our team. And it was really, really um, special to see everyone come together. I in no means uh, wanted the spotlight. I know Elias said that I've been wanting to get on stage, but it was more than just being on a stage. You know, we've all seen people get up on a stage and they don't sound that great or they don't have shit to talk about or their messaging is off. For me, it was 1000%. I couldn't sleep at night for the past two weeks because I was awake thinking, what if no one walks away with something of value? What if I bomb in that way? That is, that would have been my biggest downfall if if I got this many people into a room, 180 people or 190 people or however many people showed up because I know we ran out of chairs and there was people in the back like packed just standing up. But what if someone shows up and they don't have a takeaway or get something that they learned from the event or that they could use in their business? That would have been by far the worst thing that I could have ever thought of. So I really tried very hard to structure the questions in a way where you guys can walk away from this going, wow, okay, I took something from all the speakers and I can implement it, implement that in my business today. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm really happy that I did do it because most of the feedback and testimonials that I got from people was very, very positive. And everyone was saying that, you know, we really needed something like this right now. Like, thank you for putting this on. We appreciate you doing this for us because we, we needed this messaging right now. We needed to learn about the market and different strategies. And I know that each and every one of the speakers brought something very different. I mean, Patty's a beast. Like she totally threw down. Um, Jeremy Larson is really, really good at scripts and rocking the open houses and the neighborhood. And then um, Raquel, you know, she's all about the numbers and scaling and diet. She was talking about diving into your database and your CRM right now and tripling down on that. And if you think you have a lot of people in your database, you know, if 30 is a lot, double down, go for 300, you know, like, um, it, it was it was a big learning um, experience for me. Um, I learned a lot. And also, I think that everyone, um, you know, it, it created a lot of opportunities for me to be able to continue doing this in the future. Um, and I was talking to some people that were there uh, with me on stage, and they actually want to bring me up on their stages later on uh, in the year. So I'm excited about that. And I'm excited about, um, you know, I think as women, a lot of times they think of you as just a pretty face, you know, and um, it, it's definitely a male driven business. And for me, I take this very seriously. I don't want to just be another pretty face. I, I don't want to just smile and be cute in the corner. I actually want to give value and be a contribution because if I could show up like that, then I can sleep happy at night. And last night I went to sleep exhausted, but super, super happy. So that was my biggest accomplishment. And um, I just appreciate all of you guys that showed up. Love it. Absolutely love it. And and you guys, it you know, just goes to show when you when you make a decision, you take action, like like look what happened. Look how many people now, whether or not those people choose to join, which the idea is like let's contribute first, let's serve first. And if down the road you say, you know what, I actually want to be here with you guys officially, then cool, then she grows because she led with contribution. So I wanna to go to you guys, I wanna hear some key takeaways and I wanna hear based on what you've been learning, what you have learned in the last couple of weeks, because we've been having this conversation. I wanna hear what your key takeaways were and what you're committed to taking action on right now in your business. I'm gonna go ladies first, I'm gonna go Joe Allen, Vanessa, Chris, and then Cortez. Anybody else has questions, thoughts, you can put your thoughts in the chat or you can just raise your hand after them. So, Joelle, let's start it off. Um, I'm so emotional. I don't know what, does my camera look funny? Because I feel like no. it looks like a mirror. Okay. No, you look good. Okay. Um, I'm so emotional over this because Melody is such a, she's so real. She's so authentic. She's so um, 
somebody that you can relate to. She, you know, she's just a powerhouse. And I traveled to stay in a hotel, to find a babysitter, to make sure I could be there to help, to align myself with my team who are putting these events on to make us better agents. Nobody is doing this in the industry, nor have they before. Never. I've been in this industry for a very long time. And what I'm seeing here is just tr a tremendous amount of implementation, um, technology, um, trying to take it to the next level and not just be here, but be up, 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 whatever you want to call it, you know? And, um, and for her to invite us all in and want to do this for us, she's, the sky's the limit and she's going to go very far. And she just, I, it was like being on a TV show. She was just sitting up there like Oprah Winfrey, like asking questions nonchalantly and getting us all involved. And I felt so comfortable and loved it. Wow. Um, so I'm doing some implementation too. I've done my movie night. I am farming my neighborhood, 300. So, for the people, so really quick, Joel, for the people that don't know about your, your movie night, what is the movie night? How did you take action? What is that? Yeah, so I uh, knocked on uh, 50 doors in my neighborhood posted on next door and created my own Facebook group in my community and had a neighborhood popcorn movie night, bought a popcorn machine. Um, we had about 20 people show up, bunch of kids, some parents. Um, then my next step was my farming postcard went out to 300 neighbors. And my first card says, hello, allow me to introduce myself. And um, they are going to receive a postcard for the next 12 months, once a month. And I got a call from a lady who's actually a lender and was like, oh, my gosh, I love your marketing. I live on Millbrae. How can I support you in your business? So, you know, she can do she can help you pay for your next event. Yeah, right. So <laughs> so I got the first event, did the door knocking. I remember I've only been here since May 1st. So door knocking popcorn event this Saturday, I'm going to the park and I'm giving out 100 it's it's ice cream sandwiches and a flag. And I'm calling the mayor and the sheriff and I'm gonna ask them to come show up to my events. That's so I love so that. I'm implementing, I'm doing it. And I know that I'm not gonna eat the fruit today but I'm planting the seed and I'm building this community and I'm gonna be that person that is gonna show up all the time. So thank you guys. All right, you guys, how many people feel it? How many people feel it when Joe Allen speaks? How many people feel the energy, the excitement, the enthusiasm, the confidence, and says, "You know, no matter what, I'm gonna. I have. I have some chills right now, Joe. I'm you. so happy for you. Like I'm truly, genuinely happy for you Thank because you. I know. And you guys, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit if you say, "Gosh darn it," Elias always says, "Action, good, good, right? Action over everything." Right. And I said that in the email this morning, we are paid in direct correlation in this business to the amount of action that we take. Right. And I love this, Joanne, because you have been a massive action taker since day one. Well, and just like Melody said, like, you know, Gigi was like, mommy, what if nobody shows up? It's OK. You know what? If we keep doing it, they'll show up. So, you know, I had a teacher. It's all right. We'll just do it. And they showed up anyways, you know, build it and they will come. Right. That's right. Thank you guys. This. I'm going to tell you a secret, you guys. We have done this uh, session over 250 times, right? Group coaching. It's crazy to think. Like over 250 times we've done these sessions. Every single day, Monday, Wednesday, or excuse me, every, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I sit there and I don't open the room until on the 30th. I'm always sitting there thinking no one's going to show, right? I'm still humbled by it. I'm still 250 plus sessions in. I'm still humbled by it. What if someone doesn't show? But I don't give a shit if there's two people in this room. I'm still going to give my highest level of energy for you guys. Love you, Joellen. Cortez, let's hear from you. First off, I want to thank Melody for even giving me the opportunity to help her out. It was a super great event, good energy. I walked out of it energized. I actually stayed for the, the event after that as well until I, I got busy. I had to leave and, and make, make a run. But um, when I got home, I just, I was working on my database, just getting it tightened up. I was calling up follow-up boss because we were having like glitches with the con with my contacts and my leads and everything. So I got all that together. I was uh, just super inspired by it all. I was super happy to, to meet people that I've only seen on these meetings. I got to meet Joellen. I mean, I'm, I, it was a lot of people that I didn't even get to meet because it was just so many people there that it just was almost impossible too. But if I didn't get to meet you yesterday, I'm sorry, I, I tried, but 
it was great energy. Uh, I reached out to a city councilman candidate yesterday. Uh, we're, we're actually going to meet next week to, to interview. And I told him I was going to highlight him on my page. I'm trying to get Tuesdays. It's, on Instagram, it's Talk of the Town Tuesdays, where I'm highlighting businesses or um, just whatever's going on in the city. I invited a bunch of people to this meeting this morning. I know uh, at least my uh, homegirl Fallon is on here. She runs a nonprofit in Solano County. And uh, I'm super, I've been reaching out to her. I kind of want to work with her, kind of see if we could do something together with that as well. It was just high energy. Even the class on, uh, what was that, Tuesday was super powerful for me as well. Just Team Fast in general just has elevated me. I literally joined officially May 1st. And I personally can see the elevation. The people around me can see how much I've changed. Um, even like I brought that kid with me on Tuesday. That was because someone saw me on social media and they reached out to me and they were like, yo, my son wants to be a real estate agent. Can you help me out? So it's really all because of the knowledge and, and all the things that Team Fast has provided for me. So I don't think it's a team out there. I haven't came across it. And I have interviewed with at least three different brokers before I joined you guys. Man, I'll tell you what, you're working with that. Uh, what was his name, that kid? Uh, Bobby. Bobby. You know, it's just, it's, you know, it goes back to Ernesto, you know, when, when he brought in, what was, what was his name? Alex? Was that his name? When he brought Alex in, who's high school kid and like that, that's going to make a huge impact on his life, man. Like to think like to change the direction of someone, because if someone was talking to me about real estate at 17 years old, my life would have been completely different, man. So good stuff. I love it. I love that you're taking action. Uh, we'll go to Chris and then we'll go to Aaron. So Chris, let's hear from you, big dog. Takeaways, action. Let's hear from you. All right. Sorry about that, you guys. I might uh, repeat some of the, what people said already because I couldn't hear anything. It sounded like Joe Ellen's fist and fire. It sounded like Cortez them <laughs> too. But, uh, but anyway, though, um, yesterday was a great experience for the simple fact that uh, I'm starting to see that everybody is are real people. You know what I'm saying? They, even if you got a little bit of uh, status in this game, it's still real people and they're still willing to talk to you and exchange game. Patty was spitting that fire yesterday. She had people ooing and eyeing at what she was saying. It was all, it was exciting. And um, another thing that I that I took away from it, it's not so much actual knowledge, but it kind of is just getting to talk to everybody, just being in that social setting with like-minded individuals, and just and just seeing how supportive the team is, and 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 just everybody's trying to grow every single day, and it's it's just exciting, man. And that's that's pretty much what I took away from it. I just, uh, it's just a whole, it's just a whole community of growth. I love it. And you know, here's the thing, man. Like, this is how champions play. Like, we're, you guys are on a championship. We're number one, EXP last year. That means we are champions, right? We play like champions. We practice like champions. We come together like champions. We support, we push, we do our drills like champions. That's who we are. So, man, I, I appreciate that, Chris. Let's go over to Aaron. Aaron is one of our EXP partners in Whittier. Had an opportunity to meet her and her team out in uh, Cabo. She came out for our event yesterday here in SoCal. So, Aaron, let's hear from you. Let's see. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, loud and clear. Perfect, perfect. Hi, everyone. We were super excited. My business partner, Lucy, is on this call as well, but we were super excited to join uh, you guys yesterday. You brought so much fire, so much knowledge. Um, we're already EXP, so we know, you know where we're going in terms of the company, but I want to say thank you so much for inviting us to be a part of this today. And just really, you know, growing, we're supporting you and your growth in SoCal, and we're here to partner with you, but we're, we're excited oh, and it's good. Oh, to <laughs> Sorry, Chris wasn't muted. It's okay. It's okay. Um, so we're super excited to kind of see that growth and, you know, partner with you guys here down south. Well, we love, I love it. what you're doing. And, and, and Aaron, if you can look at your business over the next three months, what is something that you're committed to taking massive action on? For me, it's YouTube. I'm a, I'm gonna take my social media from Instagram and TikTok to and and really pivot to YouTube um, more. I know that Lucy and I have had this discussion before, so we're gonna start doing that, and um, and we'll still post on on you know Insta and TikTok and whatnot. But YouTube is where we're gonna go with regards to like sharing about our community. So I, I really loved hearing 
Jo Allen and everything that she's doing because of stuff that we want to do is talking about our communities, be involved with the community and come from service. And I think that's why our group and your group are aligned. Yeah, I absolutely love this. It was really good to see you guys yesterday. I know, uh, so we'll come to a few more questions in, in a couple of minutes, you guys, but a couple of things that stood out to me over the course of the last couple of weeks and the conversations that we're having. Um, I thought this was a big one. If you guys missed this when Raquel spoke last, was it last Wednesday or yeah, this Wednesday, excuse me, um, making your open houses a true event. And I think that what happens a lot of the times is that we scramble, right? We scramble. We do this and we say, oh my God, I'm having an open house and here's one, two, three Main Street and it's a house. Nobody fucking cares, right? Like make that an event. If you're holding an open house on Sunday, you're promoting it on Tuesday, you're walking the neighborhood. I thought it was a great idea to get a QR code on your sign writer so you can start to capitalize on those lead opportunities. Like make that, that's such a huge event with the champagne carts, with the DJ, with the music, whatever it is, because people are just going to simply want to go to Cortez's open house because that looks dope. I want to drop by just to see what he has going on because nobody else is throwing open houses like that. So I, I thought that that was uh, really powerful. Ernesto, chime in on this because you had something about open houses. Let's hear your contribution on that, brother. Yeah, Jeremy, you know, runs one of the biggest teams in Monterey and Santa Cruz, and uh, he's a big advocate of open houses, especially right now. Like anyone who is still walking in open houses is really motivated. And like the big thing that I took away was, you know, that's your storefront. All right. And I'll be honest with you, I don't always like I've been semi consistent with open houses, but it's usually, you know, pretty basic. I have a flyer, have my business cards, and my goal is always to spark like authentic conversation. But it's that first impression, uh, the follow up, like the video messages, stuff that a lot of people are not doing. Um, and for someone who's been that successful in the game to be that big of a believer in open houses, especially in like year one or two, uh, it was just like a just a good kind of refresher, a good aha. Um, and then I also read, I don't know if you guys caught, caught this yesterday, and I'm not I'm not anti-internet leads whatsoever. I mean, people go there because they don't have an agent to help them, right? So that's what, where they end up. But Redfin's going to bump their split up to like 40% in October. So uh, there's going to be less and less of the pie for you to keep. So uh, the the more like fish of your own that you can catch, and, and open houses is one of the best way to do that. It just made me even more of a proponent of open houses. And his whole thing was, you should do a lot of them in year one. And I'm like, I, I talked to him afterwards. I was like, you know what? I'm in year two and I still love doing them. So it's never too late to kind of just build a stronger foundation through open houses. And if anybody has watched the video that I posted in our Slack uh, on open houses, Kenny had me record it and then, you know, post it. There's no secrets. Like it's not that hard for me to get open houses. Um, got a couple this weekend. So if anyone wants to know like how to sustainably always find your own open houses, um, then I just kind of shared my playbook on how I make that work. Love it. <clears throat> and you've shared in person. I love that the video now lives. Um, is the video in Mighty yet? Or is it in Fast Class yet? Uh, he wanted me to record it and then he posted it in um, open houses and he uh, permanently um, pinned it to the top. Okay. Let's permanently put it in fast classes as well because it's <laughs> okay. really, really great. And here's the thing, you guys, like it should be an event, right? What happens a lot of times is that you guys show up like an hour before you go to the corners, you put your signs out, maybe put a balloon or two, you get to the open house, you're sweaty, you're scrambling, you're trying to get yourself, oh my God, I dropped some stuff, now I have papers, oh my God, where's my hand sanitizer? I get in, people come in, then another couple comes in, and I missed that couple that was really great, and I had a conversation with, where'd they go? Oh my God, I'm like, I'm frantic, and then two hours go by, and like, it's done, right? It should be so systematic you could have an event it should have a theme it should have a presence on social so i love this conversation um uh, vanessa you had your hand up let's go to you good morning everybody good morning um, i just i don't know yesterday was so amazing um i don't know if we were still talking about that but a little bit about yesterday <clears throat> one of my girlfriend i invited over um and i felt so lucky to be in that room I felt like I owed a fee to somebody like to Melody or something so to someone because there was so much value in that room. There was just, I, I'd, to the point where my girlfriend that I invited from another broker, she texted me later twice to thank me for inviting her because she's been an agent for four going on five years and does not know how to, 
And so being in that room yesterday, she thanked me because to the point where she was like, you know, I'm excited. Yeah, to Vanessa, can you put, put something over your mic? Like it, it went lower. Oh, no. Can you hear me now? Yeah, better. Yeah, so she was, at the end of the event, she was just so lucky. She said it was an eye opener for her. She just was ready to give up on, you know, real estate. But it wasn't that. It was that her broker just never taught her how to fish. And, and so, yeah, we might have a new team member coming on. I love this. I love this. So you're building because you, you served. You brought someone into the environment. And you heard Raquel say this. You heard uh, Melody echo it yesterday. We can't grow in isolation, right? That's that's our intangible. Our intangible is this community and this support, right? When you bring someone into the environment, like, wait, what? You guys have white claws. You have event space. You have people. You have coaching. You have training. What? You have guest speakers? Like, we do one quarterly legal update in our office and it's dry and, and they serve croissants that are from from costco and it's, it's you know it's weak right it doesn't it doesn't inspire me to want to take action so vanessa hearing what you've heard over the last couple of days attending the meeting you left inspired what are you committed to taking action on right now oh I, me and sam is stirring up something um in lathrop uh, most definitely it was a talk that we had at our last open house together but just the last week, you know, just hearing Raquel on our group coaching, attending that event yesterday. Yeah, we're going to be doing some community events. We're going to have a barbecue, be like Joelle and even provide a movie night and then a back to school event coming. Ooh, I love this. I absolutely love this. Um, so let's continue this conversation. I'm absolutely loving it. I have a question for everybody. All the people that you, and Otis, I'll get to you in a moment, my dog. All the people that you know and that you've been working with, that you're in Real Scout, out of the people that you're putting in Real Scout, every single day, you need to go in and see who has viewed a home in the last 24 hours. Well, I was talking with Cynthia the other day. We're doing a six-week six co coaching session. And there was a couple of people that she constantly was contacting. But there was like 14 people that have viewed a home in the last 24 to 48 hours. Even if those people said that they're not wanting to purchase a home right now, those are the people that you should be calling. Because they're, once again, like Ernesto said, those are people in your store right now. They're looking around, maybe they're browsing, but nobody said, hey, Tom, I'll be right with you and finish up with this client. We've all been into a store where nobody says anything to us, Right. So I want to encourage you guys to constantly look into your real scout and see who is actively searching their homes in the last 24 to 48 hours. And then what I want you to do is I want you to obviously call those people, communicate with them. Here's the great thing about real scout is that you're able to think like the consumer because you're able to see their analytics and their behaviors and their patterns and what they're viewing, but then act like Amazon. Here's what Amazon does better than any other company on the face of the planet. They redirect you back to the site. Hi, Vanessa. I saw that you just bought that shirt. You may also like these sunglasses, right? It brings you back full circle. Tom, I noticed that you guys just saw 123 Main Street, 125 and 126, and my friend just listed 127. I'm setting up my tours for Saturday and Sunday. Let's go see one of these houses or all of them. Cool, right? So it's effective situational prospecting. I think like the consumer, but then I act like Amazon and drive them back to looking at homes. Even if they said that they're not ready right now. How many people have ever had a consumer say that they're not ready to purchase a home and ended up purchasing a home? Happens all the time, you guys. No, okay, so you wanna wait six months. Okay, so Melissa, let me understand you correctly. If the perfect home came up in the perfect neighborhood that fit your criteria, would you still wait or would you consider writing an offer on that home? Oh, well, yeah, we would, okay, cool. So it's up to me to find the perfect home in the right neighborhood that fits that criteria, correct? Okay, wonderful, well, now I'm gonna go to work right? It's not that they won't. It's that you have to work harder and finding it. Otis, let's go to you, big dog. That, that Amazon analogy, that was fire, bro. <laughs> um, going back to what I learned yesterday, uh, I want to thank Melody as well. Um, the event was crazy. Um, I, can, I can literally listen to Patty speak all day. Um, she, she works for me in the sense that um, the way she comes off, you know what I mean? She has no time fucking around. She's straight, uh, straight and direct to the point, but the way she ties it in at the very end to make you, I kind of, excuse my language, kind of a mind fuck. 
Um, I really dig that. Like, I really dig the way that she came off, the way she puts her cards on the table. And she really puts it into the client's hand. Like, oh, you know, you made this excuse, you made that excuse. But if I can take all those away, then what's, what's really keeping you from getting into a home? So that part, and then she made a good uh, point of now with this shift. And um, I know we all been seeing these price reductions and stuff. So now I think it's really the time for you as an agent to get your to get your uh, mouthpiece on, you know, your negotiation skills. The way she leveled that, the way that sellers are coming back now, uh, the biggest thing was seven to eight years since someone's wrote an offer like that, where you got seller credit and everything's like that. And how she pointed from the price point from like houses appraised at 640, but they gave them a 630, a 629 and a 614 deal um, with different um, different terms. So just studying up on that and um, not being afraid because Jeremy said a lot of agents are going to stick their head in the sand. And I don't know about you guys, but that's surely surely not going to be me. That's right. That's right, Otis. I love this. Here's what I would do if I if I were you guys. And I've spent some time with Patty. Um, she's incredible in the way that she really cuts through falseness and pretentiousness, right? She's able to tell you exactly how it is and in a way that you don't feel like bombarded or feel offended, but it's real. And it makes you look like, hmm, she's actually, she's got a really, really good point. What I would do is I would schedule some writing sessions. And what I mean by that is get a handful of people that you work with that are lenders, right? Maybe talk to Jordan Levine, the economist that we had out a couple of months ago. Point being is like, hey, Patty, you've said some really good stuff, but it's in the moment. I'm trying to capture it on video. I want to sit down with you and I want to write. I love the way that you communicate and I want to go ahead and write out some things. I'm going to put this in my email campaigns. I'm going to put this in my dialogue. I'm going to put this in my text messages, but I want to make sure that it's fluid and I sound like you sound, right? So like schedule that time to write and then you write it out to where it really fits your style. And now you've got a new body of work, right? Guess what? Summer came and I, I, I launched a new book. And this is the growth phase. This is the era of change. This is the, the, the time that we adapt right? Right. And, and it's what's cool about this, and, 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 and maybe it's like perfect timing. I just, I just finished this composition book. This is, a, this is big for me because this is all of the thoughts and ideas and the leadership stuff and meetings. I just finished this book. I'm constantly, constantly writing. You guys, spend some time with Patty. Call her and be like, you know what? I want to write some stuff out because what you said yesterday was fire, and I might not have captured it the way that I need to capture it, Let's write. Can I say one more thing? We shared a, a brief moment that um, she said actually yesterday while she was at that thing was the year of her dad's passing. So if, if everybody could go ahead and give her some love because she's pointing a lot to us. So if everybody on here could just go give her some love because she literally left there yesterday to go see her dad at the cemetery, man. So that was powerful that she shared that with me. And I just think that it's all of our uh, uh, obligation to go give her some love. Dude, mad love, mad love that you just said that, bro. Good stuff. So, so you know, obviously we can go on and on about this conversation, but I definitely would schedule some time to do some writing. George, you had said something in the chat below, my brother. Could you chime in on what you just um, um, wrote? George Martinez, you there? Yes, yes, sorry. Um, I was unmuting myself. Um, so yeah, I actually had a buddy from college tell me that he wasn't looking um he wasn't on the market to buy anytime soon and that he was going to be looking for about looking start looking within the next year or two so i told him i was like hey dude just so you can get an idea of what's popping up on the market and get a feel for what your style and home is or what you're looking for let me set you up on some property alerts and hey you never know if something pops up and uh, you might be wanting to start your search sooner and so he owns a tree service company and i had him on search alerts on real scouts and last week he literally just hit me up and was like bro i love this property it's three acres in the hayward hills it's hard to come by in this area i want to check it out and make an offer and we checked it out it was a 1.9er and he was just like dude this is it i blocked out maybe I think the standard time was 30 minutes. I blocked out an hour. We were at the house for like an hour and a half. And he just like was like, this makes sense. I'm going to crunch all my numbers. I want to get pre-approved and make an offer now. And so I told him, I was like, damn, dude. I was like, see those property alerts I set you up on. You said two years. And you literally didn't even give me time to go through a buyer consultation with you. Because one, you're super busy. And 
I had to explain contingencies and EMT and all that stuff on the spot to him in person without a laptop or anything while we were at the house. So set your people up on property alerts. You never know. And even though this one may not have worked out for him like he wanted, he was like, you know what? Now I'm pre-approved. I know what my budget is. And so I'm going to start looking now because he was like, I didn't even know I was pre-approved for that high. I love it. I absolutely love it. You guys, effective situational prospecting. This is something I learned early in my real estate career, early from my mentor, and, and I've seen it work time and time and time again. So George, I love that. And that's why I think Real Scout is one of the best products in the industry. Maria, you typed a lot. Can you just say what you just typed? <laughs> Maria, go oh, once. There I am. There, there I you am. Are. <laughs> yeah, I'm out walking. Um, I, I all love all walking. <laughs> I know. Hey, I multitask. <laughs> what, you, what can I say? Um, you know, I you know me. I drive. I fly to get to where information is because I feel like I need that. I mean, I've been in the business for a minute, but I still need quality information. So one of the things that Patty said yesterday was like, tell everybody you're in real estate. And I was like, well, uh, duh, don't they know? But literally yesterday I was having a mammogram and boobies on the flat tray. And I'm literally having a conversation about the market. And I was like, this is so odd as I'm having my booty smashed. Um, we were talking about the market. Where is it going? What do I think? And the whole nine yards. And I walked away saying, girl, if you can do this half naked um, with your booby on a tray, you can do it anywhere, like literally. <laughs> oh, um, and then the second part to that is Patty and I talked. She's in Sacramento. I'm in Sacramento. She's like, we need to do one of these in Sacramento. I'm like, yes, we do. She goes, I have people. You tell me where, not where, but when do you want to have it? We'll get it all together. So I'm imagining Q3, you know, the beginning of the fall. Let's do this in Sacramento. We have the space. So let's all get together, my Sacramento team, fast peeps, and let's make it happen. That's right. And nothing, nothing is standing in your way. Let's pack that house, Maria. I absolutely love this. Um, I'm putting this boobies uh, comment in our uh, Keep It Moving newsletter. Uh, so thank you for being so raw and so real. Um, <laughs> I absolutely love it. Um, I, I want to give you guys another cheat code that we talked about yesterday. It kind of came up on the fly. Um, over, over the last couple of years, what are some states that you have heard that people are moving to? based on what you read, what you see, friends, family members, put in the chat. What are some states that you've heard people are moving to over the last couple of years? So Texas, Tennessee, Idaho, for sure, Tennessee, Texas, um, Georgia, yeah, Arizona, Florida, 100%, Nevada, absolutely. So in, in an effort for you guys to build, uh, this was really cool. Kenny and I just thought about this during our session yesterday. Um, there's now a collaborator tool on Instagram, right? And what I would do is I would Google or TikTok the top real estate agents in Texas, in Austin, in Reno, right? Get some information be like, hey, I wanted to talk with you and I wanted to share some thoughts with you in regards to you know collaborating. What I mean by that is that I want you to tell me what a homeowner from the Bay Area can get in your market? What are the top five homes? What are the top five cities? What can I get for $800,000 in Austin? What can I get uh, for a, a multifamily in Georgia? And collaborate with that person. And that way your information goes onto his wall, so on and so forth. So you guys have like this connection through social media and you're showing people what they get. I love those videos like, hey, you want to see how far your money goes in Austin, Texas, if you're from the Bay Area, I'm going to show you the top five homes that just hit the market, right? And then you're collaborating with that agent in that area to share lead opportunities. And you're speaking to a different demographic, you're building relationships, what you're doing is you're building your referral network, right? And so it's like, there's like no limitation to what we can potentially do, right? If I know that over the last few years, 36% of the people that left the Bay Area went to Sacramento. Yeah, I want to know Maria. I want to have a connection with her and I want to have that bond. But we don't just have to do that locally within 50 miles of where we live. 
we can do that across the nation and it makes for really, really good content. So just thinking about ideas here, they're gonna help you guys build and build a referral network. Um, so let's go to, um, let's go to one other person, Nicole, and then we'll start to come full circle in the conversation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wanted to take a second to introduce somebody who joined the call, my friend Nina. We go back to ninth grade at Holy Names High School and she's looking to get licensed and she was brave enough to speak up on the training yesterday and she'll be taking her test next month. And I'm hoping that she will come and join Team Fast. And Awesome, awesome. Well, Nina, thank you for being here. Appreciate you being here. Thank you for being um, you know, a guest today. And hopefully you took something of value out of our time today. So let's do this, you guys. I, I, I want to you know, obviously have the message be really clear. Everything right now, and someone put this in, this, in the chat. Uh, it's the summer of skill set, right? This is why us going to the sales mastery in a couple of days is going to be super, or a couple of weeks, excuse me, is going to be super important. When you're hearing about dialogue, you guys, this is not because we think that your dialogue should be on point. This is the time where you really, really perfect your messaging, that you go in, that you look at how you're going to say it, when you're going to say it, and what you need to say. This is when you elevate it. And I love that you, Chris said that, summer of skill set. So evolve right now and make sure that you guys aren't just going to these rooms, like go to these rooms and say, okay, what can I do right now? The door knocking campaigns, the events in Sacramento, the movie nights, the popcorn night, the music, all these things, you guys. Oh. I, someone Can someone mute themselves? I don't know who that is. All right, thank you. Um, you know, like, why aren't we doing benefit concerts? If you're a musician, let's do a benefit concert. Let's throw an event in our space that all of the money that is earned goes to, you know, helping a cause, to donate to a family, to help them purchase a home, to make sure that they're not living in squalor, whatever that is, all the money that's raised, right? We're going to do a real estate and tailgate. People are going to bring their cars out. They're going to bring their family out. We're going to have food. We're going to have raffles. We're going to earn money for a cause in the Bay Area. There is literally nothing stopping you from truly, truly taking action, perfecting the message. Go on social media right now and say, buyers, I want to share with you why five, five reasons why it's a great time to become a homeowner. What are the advantages of a buyer right now? Right now, the real estate market has become more fair for the average Joe. When last year, you couldn't compete with $300,000, $400,000 in your family that has tons of money that lives in the Hamptons and gave you money to purchase and you didn't have any appraisals and no protection, it's okay, but I want this home because I love living in this neighborhood. Now we're not in that market. Now the person that has been saving and scraping and doing everything they can can now go into this market and has an actual fighting chance. Who cares if the interest rate is at 6.5%? They have a chance now. They have an opportunity. And those realities, those dreams become more of a reality. And here we are. Remember last year, Tom, when we were talking, it was just so hard. I want to share with you what has actually happened in the market and some advantages that you have as a buyer. Share with consumers right now, what are the top advantages of them purchasing a home? How are they more protected because they have contingencies in place now? That they're not just going all in and using money and, and pulling their reserves and liquidating all their assets just to purchase the home that's $200,000 over asking price. That doesn't serve them. Go out and serve people in a way that we never have and make sure that that messaging is clear. We have a huge opportunity right now. This market is more fair than it's been in the last three years. Capitalize on that, but capitalize on the messaging. So I want to do this, you guys. I want to go full circle. I want to hear from a couple of you guys. Key takeaways from today's session. I appreciate you being here. Adrian, Reliza, I'm going to go over to you. Key takeaways from today's session. Let's hear from you. And glad that we were able to connect the other day as well. Yes. So my key takeaways is, you know, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. Um, branding myself, connecting with people. I, um, I'm going to go back onto my Facebook page and start calling. You know, if I run out of people to talk to, I'm going to go on my, my Facebook page and start connecting on Facebook, um, whether it's giving them a call on Facebook or just DMing them and letting them know and just, you know, talking to them. I'm also going to um, do the things that I've been putting off. 
in my business. Um, you know, I've been going through stuff, but I'm um, picking myself off the floor and going to start network networking more. So that's my key takeaways. Love it. I love it. And I appreciate you sharing. And thank you for being here with Keith. Let's hear from your key takeaways from today's session. Key takeaway from me. Um, I got a lot of work to do. Uh, I no longer want to be a passive agent. If I, if I'm in contact with someone and they tell me I want to wait, I'm okay, cool. You want to wait, but I'm going to still reach out to them, set them up on real scout, gain their interest by constantly being in front of their face. That way that wait isn't so long, you know, and I'll be the one that they circle back to. So I no longer want to be like a passive agent. Wow. That's I love I'm that. Doing. I love that. And you know, really, really good stuff for Keith. And, and I'll tell you what, I, I just launched our, our newsletter, our Keep It Moving newsletter. It's all about you guys. It's clips from you guys, things that you guys are saying. Um, and, and we have like a 39% open rate and um, uh, I think it was a 5.5% click-through rate on that. And I'm funneling people to set up appointments. I didn't do this this whole entire time. And I was like, God, I'm missing huge opportunities to build. And so like I'm taking action on different things too. So it's just like create a mail chain right? All those people that said that they didn't want to like stay front of mind, right? Oh, she's got a dope new newsletter. She's got a great new article. What's going on? How's your markets more affordable? All those things. So you're constantly front of mind. Create your, your MailChimp campaign. That way you're consistently getting in front of everyone. Cortez, let's go to you and then I'm going to come back to you, Aaron Grace. I want to talk about uh, what Jorge said and uh, what Rakita said as far as like people saying they weren't ready. So I was ref someone that I knew referred me to a client and I had sent her to pre-approval. She didn't get pre-approved at the time. And she said, um, I'm just going to, you know, wait, get my things together. And she's like, don't worry, I'll contact you. And I, I was passive. I just let it go. I was at my stepdaughter's birthday party about earlier this, earlier this, well, it's July now. So in June, like June 15th and the person who referred me to her, I said, man, this is a good time for the market. I'm going to reach out to Cherie and let her know she could buy a house. And she said, she just bought her house. So, I mean, that was like, you know, a gut check right there. That was a super gut check. I, my feelings were hurt. I had to go sit at another table real quick. Like I should have followed up with her. Just, I should at least just check, checked on her, you know? So following up is super important. That was like a, a rough, a rough lesson for me, for sure. Yeah, well, good lesson to learn. It's a, it's a, you know, it's happened to a lot of us, man. So good lesson to learn. Aaron Grace, let's hear from you. Key takeaways, and then I'm gonna have Ernesto close this out. Hi. Um, okay. So for me, I think I really just appreciated everybody's uh, comments in terms of like taking action and not settling down, especially right now with the market shifting. Like, there's gonna be agents that leave the market uh, or leave the industry rather, and right now is when we go hard. So um, I really appreciated like. This, this call today because it's always in the back of our minds, right? Like the stuff that we have to do, um, but somehow our our mindset kind of takes us in another direction. Sometimes our life like, oh, this is more important than that right now. So I think just staying super focused on, um, on the goals and like for me, my why, you know? Um, so I really appreciated today's call and everybody's uh, comments and contribution. Well, we appreciate you being here and, uh, you know, we're looking forward to to working with you closer in Southern California. Uh, so are we. So are we. Uh, let's go ahead and come full circle, big dog. Um, take us off the field. Let's hear for your key takeaways and then take the team off the field. And uh, let's keep rolling. God, I don't know if one thing stands out. I'm just going to think to some conversations that I've had. I think really two things. Um, again, uh, a lot of us on this call tend to be newer. Not everybody is, but even then we have a mix of newer and even some seasoned agents. And I had a couple of conversations with agents this week that, uh, in fact, yesterday I was talking to somebody at our uh, meetup or our uh, event. She said she lost she lost a listing to a more experienced agent. Like the seller was asking for a more experienced agent. And I don't know that we kind of asked for that clarity. Like what specifically would a ex seasoned agent offer you that, that maybe I can't. And it's interesting. I, it, two things come to mind. One, I had a conversation with another agent who's extremely seasoned. And I don't say this because I'm smarter than anybody, but this agent 
told me that they were in negotiation. They had a listing and it wasn't selling. The buyer asked for a $50,000 credit. I said, have you thought about just offering a buy down instead? Hey, buyer, you, you are asking for a $50,000 price reduction, but what would that do to your payment? Well, what if I can work with your lender to get you the payment that you want and give you a buy down credit? And it's a win-win, right? The buyer gets the payment that they want. The seller saves a lot less money. You don't have to do a full $50,000 price reduction. This is an agent that has many, many, many years on me. So how this relates to us, the fact that we are doing this, right? And the fact that uh, I forgot who mentioned it, maybe Nicole, but somebody is an agent that's been in another brokerage or team for five years and hasn't been exposed to this. Like the fact that we are doing this, we're coming to these calls. We are choosing to continue to put in the time and the, the commitment to just continue to learn, right? And stay ahead of our craft, even more so than a lot of seasoned agents that are just kind of stuck in their way, stuck in their bubble. I hope that gives you guys all uh, just a little confidence boost that it has, it has nothing to do with how long you've been in the business. Like uh, we do this because we want to continue to add uh, solutions and value to the people that we're here to serve. So um, hopefully that is encouraging to all of you. And I encourage that you never, ever stop learning. I'm, I'm forever a student. So, and I hope you feel the same way. Man, I absolutely love that. You guys, um, you know, I appreciate everyone's thoughts, insight. Lily, come really quick. So I want everyone to say bye to Lily. She's going back to Alaska today, which breaks my heart, but she'll be back in two weeks for three weeks. And this is what it's all about. You guys, right? This is all that it's about it's about our family it's about our love it's about our gratitude and think about that when you guys are going out there and taking action right do that for the people that are going to look back years from now and say wow like look at all the sacrifices they've made in order for us to have the life that we have now so thank you dad thank you mom so i appreciate you guys more than you know he's uh, your mini elias i know it's crazy it's he's crazy. your mini Bye. And here's the thing you guys i didn't have to be here right? I chose to be here because I get to be here, right? I could have said, you know, last morning with, with Lily, I rescheduled some of my afternoon appointments because it runs close to the time getting her to the airport. But I could have just said, no, nah, but it was too important off the tail end of Melody's event. Like I wanted to see you guys. I wanted to hear from you guys. And I wanted to, you know, be here for you. And so um, what do you have to, can you tell you, well, hold on really quick. Give me three. Give me three. Come play like a champion. I like a champion. All right, cool. So you guys heard it from her. You heard it from Ernesto. Have a wonderful day. I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. Peace. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Lily. See you.